from Ichiban Painting and today we're going to be doing a review, overlook, product information about the Harden Steenbeck Ultra. So this is the fancy nice Ultra. Uh, it comes in with a standard cardboard box and the instruction manual and then after that you get this case which has nothing really special, just a transport case but this is the sexy beast that we want to look at today. So this is the Harder and Steenbeck Ultra. This airbrush is considered as the entry level or entry uh, range model for Harder and Steenbeck models. They have also the Evolution, the Infinity and the Grapho which are other airbrush in different pr price range. This airbrush is their most affordable one uh, from their range. Okay, so let's look at the prices. For the <clears throat> Harden Steenbeck Ultra, it's really an affordable airbrush. You can find it around 80 US dollars to 100 US dollars. And if you're looking at the, the UK market, it's around 60, maybe like around 60 pounds, depending on where you buy it. And then it's really, it's really affordable because when you look at this compared to the other models that they have, which is uh, the Evolution CR Plus, uh, the, the standard evolution is about $150 and then if you're looking at the CR Plus we're talking about $200, $230 and then after that even more depending on the model you take and then after that if you go to the Infinity I think the cheapest Infinity is around $300 and it goes considerably up if you take the CR Plus version or other versions like 2-in-1 and things like that so considering the price range the, the Ultra is really really affordable um, of course to make it affordable like this, uh, Harder and Steenbeck had to cut down on some of the options that you get with this airbrush. So let's look a little bit about uh, the options that are not on the model compared to if you invest a little bit more into uh, other airbrushes. So I'll take here the Evolution CR Plus just to compare. Uh, so right off the bat, the things that the Ultra doesn't have compared to a higher end airbrush are it doesn't come with a quick release adapter. Um, the trigger are the triggers are different uh, into both models. Uh, the Evolution and the Infinity come with this cut trigger that has some recessed, uh, like slutted thing, just to make sure that when you put your finger on it, it's it's really comfortable. Compared to the Ultra, which has a, a recessed thing, but it's still a round trigger. Still, it doesn't matter. It's still a really comfortable airbrush. But overall, with time, this airbrush, the Evolution, is going to be a little bit more comfortable and a little bit better to manipulate if you're airbrushing for a long period of time. The Ultra comes with uh, a press fitted cup compared to the Evolution and the Infinity that comes with a screwed in cup that you can change for different sizes. Then on the Evolution you have a, a crown type needle protector which they call a fine precision or fine line uh, needle guard and here you have a normal standard uh, cup and a needle guard that is full on. But these are the basic things that you will see right off the bat as far as bells and whistle goes. When we're going to take this airbrush apart, you're going to see a couple of other differences between the two. But overall, for the price, this is an extremely, extremely good airbrush. Uh, the trigger is relatively really nice. It still, it has a harder uh, trigger if you compare it to higher end model. That's the softer trigger compared to this one. So you need a little bit more pressure and force to move your trigger around. But considering the fact that if you are a beginner, if you're looking at this airbrush, you're probably into uh, you just started airbrushing and or start trying to upgrade from a Chinese or a cheap Chinese airbrush to this 
model, uh, which is the next step in line from having you know cheap airbrushes, this model will be totally amazing for you and it's gonna be nice. You still have a lot of trigger and the fact that, the, uh, not trigger, but a lot of control and the fact that the trigger is a little bit harder for people that are beginning, it might actually help you a little bit more to learn and to have more control with your finger, you know, the motion and uh, the, the ref, um, how do they call it? I forgot the mechanism or whatever, the muscle memory of being able to hold your airbrush and control it. Then after the, after a while, you're going to be able to step it up and go into a smoother trigger, which will require a little bit more control on your part, but overall it's going to give you more control when you're doing your fine line in your work. So let's take this bad boy apart. So basically what you want to do when you want to take this airbrush apart is that you want to unscrew the back part here set it aside then you want to unscrew this nut here like so and then you can carefully take the needle out and, you, and when I say careful you want to be careful people bend their needles when they're taking it out and putting it back in and also a lot of people do tend to bend their needle when they're setting it apart on their table when they're cleaning the airbrush and they don't pay attention and they put their hands on the on the or they rest their arm on the needle itself and they bend it that way so you need to be careful and after that we're gonna move to the back block assembly this one doesn't actually have a back block itself you have to unscrew the second uh, screw here which will take uh, the back pin and the spring all together and then after that you're gonna have the trigger that comes really easily like so out and if you want to take the cup like I said it's press fitted in so you just pull it out and the needle and the nozzle and a nozzle and the nozzle guard or needle guard will come out just by unscrewing them so this is a major thing that if you're you're actually moving or stepping up from a Chinese airbrush or an entry level airbrush from another company sometimes they have screw in a nozzle which are really really bad because they break really easily and they're really weak this one is press fitted in so once you put it inside the seal that you see here will actually sit properly on the inside of this part uh, the inside of the main body and will create a seal which will in turn uh, make your, your whole airbrush work properly if you ever had a problem of having bubbles in your paint when you're painting it means that normally the the, ne the nozzle doesn't have a proper seal which m means that there's circulation of air into it and a, a backwash of air which makes it have bubbles so basically that's the takedown what I was talking about um, you know the airbrush not having a back block I will take my evolution apart hold on a second and you're gonna see it here uh, this is the evolution and as you can see here the evolution has a really big opening here compared to this one if you look at from the sideways uh, this one has this whole section here uh, compared to the evolution which the back block is actually in one piece and the ultra has only the the middle uh, parts here with the the spring um, you know normally technically you shouldn't have paint that goes all the way inside here uh, you know paint should always stay in the front part of the airbrush this part here but you could have paint that will actually go here with time so on the ultra it's going to be a little bit more harder to clean for this purpose but I will give you a little trick let me pull back the evolution because he's already almost pull back together I'm not gonna put the trigger in but when my trigger uh, when my needle is sitting in my airbrush and I'm cleaning the airbrush right what I like to do is unscrew this pin here take out the nozzle and the crown and then after that I will push my needle like so and I'll pull my needle out from the front because when you pull your needle out from the back when there's paint in this section in this area of the needle the paint will actually tend to go inside this section so by pulling your needle out from the front because you want to take out your nozzle anyway because you want to clean it when you're cleaning your airbrush by doing it this way you're gonna make sure that you never never have uh, paint that's going to go in the back section of your airbrush so especially if you're using an ultra where it's going to be a little bit more difficult to access this area in the back with uh, cleaning tools and uh, you know cotton buds or anything you're using to clean your airbrush then it's going to be helpful a little bit if you have an ultrasonic cleaner you won't have to put the whole body into the ultrasonic cleaner if you keep this section here pretty pretty clean so basically this is the ultra when it's taking apart one little thing right now right now since we have the trigger taken apart harder and steenbeck has a really really nice and ingen uh, ingenuitive system of trigger as you can see here it's like kind of a ball bearing or a ball joint 
that sits on the valve. On other type of airbrush you might have seen a little figgly part here that's separated and then the trigger which has a two pin system on each side that sit in a slot. When you drop down the, the trigger the the pin goes in a slot and this will actually when you have your trigger in the airbrush you will have some side movement of the trigger and also the, the normal movement of the trigger which can be a little bit annoying and also would reduce the control that you're gonna have with your airbrush a lot of company use the other system and totally for me it's a big uh, big flaw the harder and steam back comes with this system where this part here is actually two part in one they are you know it together and with the ball joint that will sit on the valve itself and will create a really really nice fitting that will not have side motion of the trigger and makes it really really easy to put back together if you had a Chinese airbrush before or some other airbrushes from other company and you have the little separated back piece here that goes after the trigger you know what I'm talking about but putting that shit back together it's crap okay so let's put the bad boy back up together Okay, so time to put it back together. I like to start from the front when I put my airbrush back together. So I put the nozzle in the nozzle guard. I screw back my nozzle, like so. Now look, here's the important part where I was talking about the trigger. Look at how easy. I just drop in my trigger here, boom, it's done. Make sure my trigger is sitting properly, good. And after that, I take my back block, which is on other cheaper airbrush, you notice that these comes in many, many parts like three or four parts depending on the airbrush brand. This is only one part that you need to screw, that's it. Now my trigger is back together and it's working properly. Now time to reinsert my needle. One little trick I can give you when you're reinserting your needle is to make sure that the, the trigger is sitting properly where it should be. If it's not sitting properly where it should be, the holes are not gonna align, so when you're gonna insert your, your needle inside, you might hit the trigger and in terms bend your needle. And you want to also make sure that this nut here is loose. If you have it tight when you screw this part here and if you tighten it up, it's going to make sure it's going to uh, block the needle from going back in and you might bend it. So you want to make sure that this nut here is unscrewed. Then you want to reinsert it really carefully and push it until it sits properly in the nozzle itself. Then you want to screw this back part, put the back block together. Then you're done. The last part is the paint cup that you want to just press fit in. And here you go. So here you have the whole airbrush put back together. So overall for $100 you get a whole bang for your buck. And why is that? You're going to ask. Because if we take the Evolution, which is still in part, or you take the Infinity, or the other one in their uh, range which is called the Grapho, um, Harden and Steenbeck uses the same needles and same nozzle on all the models. So if you take, for example, a needle kit and a nozzle kit here that you have that comes with nozzle, nozzle guard, and a needle. If you look on the thing, it says four evolution, infinity, ultra, and grapho. So basically when you buy an airbrush from Harder and Steam back in this range, either if it's the ultra, the evolution, or the infinity, which are uh, more expensive models, you're still gonna have the same performance needle and nozzle wise, which is different from other company that offers you needle and nozzle that are specific for each of their models which in turn might vary your performances so overall having uh, you know a 300 or 400 dollar uh, infinity that has the same needles and same nozzle as the ultra is amazing you get the same performance the only difference are like i said the little bells and whistle that vary from different models then after that it comes down to the action itself uh, having a harder or smoother trigger or when you're talking about the infinity from their range which is fully adjustable the trigger you can adjust it to your liking with some adjustment nuts so basically this airbrush for the price which is about a hundred dollar or eighty dollars I saw some on online at around eighty dollars this is incredible you know eighty dollars with shipping included for that that piece of equipment which is a beautiful tool I, I couldn't say you know more it also comes in a version which is called the ultra X which is actually a bottom feed airbrush but depending on your needs you're gonna be able to decide which one is the best for you uh, for my personal taste uh, for a modeler you should go with a, a gravity feed airbrush like this double action so this one is in term a really really good package deal for your investment so this is my review of the Harder and Steenbeck Ultra. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're looking for an entry-level, mid-range uh, 
airbrush or an entry level that has the entry level price but that's still going to be able to give you the performances that other airbrush and other companies are not able to give you for that price you should really check out this model from Harder and Steenbeck. If you're interested in other models like I mentioned in this video which are the Evolution or the Infinity you check my channel I will have some reviews of those two models coming really soon. So this was Hugo from Each Mom Painting and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any question concerning this airbrush or other airbrush from the Harder and Steenbeck range you can always send me a comment in the in the comment section below or you can head over to the Harder and Steenbeck website which the links is in my description and you're going to be able to uh, get in contact with them over there and they will be able to answer any question that you have concerning their products. So I would like to say a big thanks to Mike over at Harder and Steenbeck for providing me this ultra uh, for a contest that I'm running right now and for also uh, you know having the nice uh, pleasure of sponsoring me. So I hope you have a really good day. I'll see you guys on the next video.